the sky. Uh, people all over the world are participating in our coverage tonight, watching this, uh, these live pictures from Mars all over the place. At Planet Hollywood in Washington, the National Space Society put together a big wing ding. Education Director Carolyn Josephs joins us now. Carolyn, I have a four-year-old, and I know a lot of children who are in the, uh, the, the five to ten-year-old age group who have seen these pictures tonight and really been knocked, uh, knocked down by them. Is this going to help? stimulate interest in space science, do you think? I hope so. Yep. Um, what do you think the, uh, the uh, offshoot of this might be as the, as the education director of the Space Society? Uh, I mean, there are people who've created CD-ROM programs to uh, show people animations of these various things. Is this, is this going to be a good thing? I think it is. Um, our chapter does, too. Yeah. Okay, Carolyn. Thanks very much for joining us. Looks like a big party there at Planet Hollywood in Washington. All right. Uh, back to Pasadena. Story Musgrave, John Zarella. More pictures will begin coming down pretty soon. We're going to compile them here. If they look remarkably different from the pictures we have seen before, we will uh, uh, we will pop in and share them with our viewers. Uh, just a remarkable may, night. Yeah. We may, John, have uh, some photos that'll give us an idea whether they were able to retract the airbags if they performed that maneuver, because there was some talk that they were uplinking the commands to the vehicle not long ago, so <coughs> it's certainly possible. Yeah, I, I think that that's what I'm hearing in my ear, John, that, they, that they, these pictures will show, uh, whether they've been successful in getting this thing ready to get the rover off. But uh, so much has to be just right for this to happen. Uh, the rover on Mars has to be able to see the Earth. The sun has to be up to charge the solar panels. So it's a, it's a very complicated thing. We've only got a couple minutes left in our, in our live programming here. Story Musgrave, you got any final <coughs> thoughts before, um, uh, before we sign off here tonight uh, about, uh, about the meaning of this, sending uh, unmanned robots to Mars and the prospect of uh, having human beings, you or me or my four-year-old Jay walking around up there someday? Well, John, uh, when he landed on the moon, uh, I was in mission control, and uh, after the dust had settled, so to speak, I had to go outside and, uh, and look up and take a look at the moon. The moon had new meaning, and what it was to be human had new meaning, and uh, I have not looked into where Mars is tonight, but I will look into that, and uh, hopefully it'll be visible tonight or tomorrow morning to go out there and take a look at that planet and, and realize that uh, we are there and if the quest continues. All right, it's on the west side. Uh, look to the west, uh, just above the horizon. It might have already set for the night, but you'll be able to see it just around sundown tomorrow. That's uh, all over the United States, I'm told. John Zarella, uh, you come back to me before in our final minutes here and, uh, and give me your final thoughts on this. What a day. What a day of remarkable, remarkable information and visual information. And, you know, it's one of those days where the hours just click by so quickly because one event after the other after the other, starting very early this morning, was happening here with uh, the, the descent through the atmosphere and this very four and a half minutes of, uh, uh, of, of just one pyrotechnic event after the other having to take place perfectly for this to work. And everything did.